Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and uh, today I'm doing something a little bit unusual because I received this uh, Limtech uh, ES1. This is a millimeter wave radar uh, presence sensor and um, instead of doing the re uh, usual review I thought that I've already spent quite a lot of time just to you know test how this device works in uh, various uh, you know scenarios various different rooms very different sizes then I wanted to share that with you so this video is only about me testing this device how it detects uh, presence in a room how long it can hold the presence uh, uh, even if you know I'm not really moving or just sitting in one place or looking at my phone or something like that and um, it has some other features as well so it can also tell the distance that where it is detecting motion so we are going to see how accurate that is and how useful that could be in various scenarios and it also does um, a couple of other things so for example it has also uh, a luminance sensor built in so you can use it for specific scenarios if you only want to uh, you know trigger something when it is dark so it is a fairly good device uh, after all I mean overall it contains quite a lot of uh, you know useful features and I have to say that um, I think it you know it works pretty good so definitely the these millimeter wave sensors I think they operate uh, in a couple of you know tens of maybe tens of gigahertz I need to look up the uh, documentation I forgot but uh, it it is remarkably good at uh, detecting presence uh, even in bigger rooms even when the the you know the subject is not really moving so for example it detected my presence throughout the whole night when I was sleeping in my bedroom so that's I think quite remarkable and also the the distance uh, detection is also not very quick but it is you know fairly consistent and fairly effective so again you can use it to create scenes where let's say if you if I'm this part of the room that I'm going to do you know maybe I'm going to light certain lights but if I'm on the other side of the room based on the you know the detection uh, the distance that acted that I'm going to turn on some other lights in the room so I think they are definitely uh, you know uh, worth looking at it's uh, you know a nice uh, looking device uh, it is just a detector you get some USB cables with it and you also get this magnetic uh, sort of like holder where you can put it on something and then it just magnetically locks onto that so it is very easy to mount and uh, yeah let's dive into the video and then hopefully I would uh, shortly follow it up with a um, sort of like a more regular video when we see how it looks like in various applications oh I haven't mentioned this is Zigbee one so we should be able to test it in various applications uh, for this test I hooked it up to my Zigbee to MQTT server so I could analyze and show you the data in a very simple dashboard that I just built in Nordred before I explain the setup scenario let me just show you what you can see on the small insert so I am displaying the screen that, well, I'm displaying the data that I got uh, for out of the sensor over Zigbee to MQTT. And uh, what you see that <coughs> I specifically set the, uh, the illuminance that we are not really going to look at this. Uh, um, well, we are not really re interested in the illuminance, but you can use it for, you know, some special scenarios or automations. But uh, what I actually wanted to just measure really is the occupancy. Uh, which is obviously true or false and this is what you see as the blue line so when the blue line is on zero then the occupancy is false so there is no you know no person detected in the room and then when it jumps up to basically just the arbitrary number of 100 then that's when it starts detecting uh, occupancy so you can see at when it you know jumped up from zero to one zero to 100 and then on the sort of like the uh, the maroon or the orange color you can see the target distance so this is in centimeters which the uh, the device is detecting where the motion is from the sensor okay so the first example was in my study it is a very small room it's about six square meters and I also wanted to test out if it if it behaves worse in a small room as it as, as opposed to like a bigger open space so the uh, the motion sensor or the radar sensor was right in front of me you can see it um, uh, well see so you can see it on the picture and um, so there was you know the two screens were also close by I wasn't really sure if it would create any issues with you know how it detects distance or motion 
But uh, what you can see from this video is, uh, I mean, I was working on the computer, so I was, you know, I was making some small movements. Obviously, my hand was moving my, um, you know, my hand, yeah, my hands was moving, either typing or moving the mouse. And I was also like, you know, uh, looking left or right or, you know, scanning the screen. And obviously it had no issues, you know, tracking me and reporting the presence in the room. So I didn't really expect anything else. Uh, I think it is a fairly easy scenario. I'm relatively close to the sensor. So that's, that's you know, that's good. as sort of expected. What I also noticed right in the beginning is that um, the distance was fairly constant. It's not, you know, correct distance because uh, let's say I was sitting like, what about 30 40 centimeters from the sensor so that's sort of like a feed or over a feed and it was like showing if i remember correctly like 86 uh, centimeters so that's definitely more than uh, what the uh, what the actual distance is and then what i tried is that i left the room and i left the door open but i walked you know pretty far away from the from uh, into the kitchen from my mom study so I was definitely not around the corner, like, you know, on the other side of the wall, because sometimes these things can see through the wall. But it took about, you know, it took some time until the device actually said that, uh, you know, there is no longer presence in the room. And you can see that the distance sort of like hovers uh, into the upper limit. So I think for this test, I set the distance uh, to, no, actually I set it to 2 meters and 24, uh, 25 uh, centimeters. Uh, which is definitely more than the width of the room. So anyway, eventually it's said that uh, this motion is no longer reported. And then eventually I moved back into the room. So as I said, the, the door was open. So I just, you know, moved into the opening and I sat down. And I think the, you know, the device was pretty quick because as soon as I moved into the room, it was like showing that, oh yeah, there is presence. I don't think it took like um, more than even a second for it to, um, you know show the presence so that's that's definitely good and it's it's a very fast response so I, i'm quite happy with that and last thing what i tried is i tried moving further away from the desk um uh, in the room so let's say from the thought 40 centimeters maybe to you know 60 or 80 and as you can see that with a little bit of delay the device started reporting a bigger distance but uh, in that case for some reason it was you know more there was more variation in the measurement. It was more going a little bit up and down as opposed to when I was sort of leaning forward and sitting in front of the computer when he was reporting almost the same distance all the way through. So again, in a smaller room, I don't think that you could use this um, device to accurately stay, say whether you are in one part of the room or the other. But again, this is such a small room that in this particular scenario, I don't really think it makes sense. So for the second test, I moved the sensor at the end of my really long and relatively narrow corridor. So you can see there, there is a door on the left. So that's my study. Uh, there is a bathroom on the opposite side and all the way at the end of the corridor is the kitchen. So I have to say that the distance all the way to the end is more than six meters. So that's outside the detection range of this uh, sensor. So what I tried uh, for the first time is I move into the frame and I move away into the kitchen. And as you can see, as soon as I open uh, or as soon as I uh, show up in the, um, in the door opening, then it picks up my presence and it shows that you know my presence is recorded and that's um, again that was quick and i was moving away and then it sort of like you know tracks me as i move away from the sensor but i think this tracking or the frequency of the update is not really frequent so i was thinking like you know if you have a long corridor and if this device can measure distance or you know the changes of the distance maybe you can set up some you know special light uh, effects that the light moves with you as you move either away or towards the sensor but uh, I don't think it would really work because, you know, the delay in this reporting. So, you know, by the time you can make a sense of that you are moving away of the sensor, you probably already moved way past that point anyway. So then I waited on the other end and I started moving back. And as you can see, it picks off my presence again 
uh, for about the six meters, which is the maximum uh, detection distance for this sensor. So um, again, it works. It picks up my distance and uh, and presence. And again, as I move out of the frame, then it shows that uh, you know presence is no longer detected. And the next thing I wanted to try is what happens if I just move across this corridor. And again, I think the results were really good because as soon as I move in, it picks up my presence and I move away as I move uh, out, well, move out of the corridor in the opposite door. And within like, you know, 20 seconds or so, then it stops uh, reporting presence. So again, it's, I think it's a good enough um, device if you want a corridor to be lit for that short period of time when you know somebody's walking through the corridor and not to have like a timer which you know will be on for about you know a couple of minutes uh, whenever somebody just passes by and finally i wanted to test the distance again so i was moving slowly towards the sensor i was stopping a couple of uh, places in between but again, as I said previously, the um, you know the way or you know the the frequency of the updates means that it definitely tracks as you are moving towards the camera. But then there is a let's say a considerable like a couple of second delay until the you know your actual position and when your update changes again uh, for that special effect that I was talking about. I think this sensor is too slow. But even in a uh, in a shorter uh, in a longer corridor, you could pretty much tell if somebody is standing in a particular pace. But again, for a corridor, I think that's not really a typical scenario. You can't really do too much with this information, especially with that delay. And the third scenario was the living room test. Um, so here, uh, the the sensor was right next to the camera, so you are looking at the uh, the room from the vintage point of view, the sensor, and this is a fairly big room. Well, big for the sensor itself because the the the, the wall that you see on the picture and uh, you know the big patio windows are just about six meters, a little bit before six meters. So you will see when I walk all the way across the room, it it measures like. 5.9 meters or something like that so it's a good enough test for this uh of a device and what you can see that as soon as i move into the frame then it reports that i am in the room and i walk all almost all the way to the end of the other end of the room and i sit down to you know scroll on my phone and watch some videos so that is a pretty motionless uh, activity especially from that distance and i was sitting there for a good well, you can see the time time frame there, but uh, you know, I just wanted to make sure that it keeps reporting my presence, and it pretty much does. And what you can also see in the distance there, I think here the distance is actually really shows you where you are in the rooms. So it was pretty much uh, showing the same distance as as soon as I was you know sitting in that position, and it was fairly consistent. So again, I think it now the uh, the advantage of a bigger room uh, probably you know helps the sensor to accurately determine the the correct uh, correct distance as opposed to the really small room which is my study and then after some point i decided to just cha uh, change my position to sit a little bit closer to the sensor and as you can see there is still that you know couple of seconds of delay but then it really picks up my new position and it manages to hold that position fairly consistently and then show that now I am in a different position. So if I would have two lights in this living room, one is, you know, uh, lighting up the corner in that uh, sofa and the other room is maybe, you know, that other position, I think I would be able to use the distance measurement with, you know, with some brackets and then turn different lights on based on where the device uh, senses my presence and, and well, report the distance and after some time i you know i obviously stood up and i walked outside and and again after like about 20 or 30 seconds then the device stopped reporting my presence and here i also wanted to test the various distances so you can see me you know sta um, standing in a couple of you know different distances from the sensor and again i think here the um, the results are much better because uh, while well, definitely there is a delay, um, 
like when I move as opposed to when the this uh, the, uh, the sensor reports the change or the, sorry the new distance but it it sort of reports distant uh, distances so like specific distances which match where I was standing in the room of course I did this test with you know one single person so that would definitely differ if there are multiple people or there is a crowd in the room but uh, yeah that would be uh, difficult to spot anyway but uh, so if you have a bigger room or like you know like again a sizable room with different places that you normally sit and if you are alone then it would be able to tell you whether you are, whether you are in this position or the other position and you can see that when I walk all the way to the end of the room I was sort of like very close to the the detection distance the absolute uh, the, um, detection limit for this sensor but it was still it was able to pick up my position pretty accurately and then finally what I did is I moved behind the column that is well basically that what you can see on the left side of the screen and even though I was sort of in the same room but I was just uh, standing behind the column more or less motionless and then it stopped reporting the, um, the the presence. And that was something that I wanted to test because obviously these radar sensors, these high frequency radar sensors bounce around much, much more easily. Uh, so sometimes they can see behind stuff or behind the sensor, but it is not really the case for this one. So if it doesn't really see you in the line of sight, it's not really going to report you as um, as the presence. Well, yeah, it's not going to report a presence. And I also done pretty much the same where I was, uh, well, you can't really see the video of that, but I was trying to approach the sensor from the side. And uh, so I noticed that this sensor has like a 120 degree field of view. So it definitely doesn't see like 180 or even behind itself, which I think it's, it's definitely more useful because it's sort of like in line with what we also, how you get used to the, all the PIR sensors. So uh, I think that's also a good result. And finally, the last scenario is, well, I only have a picture of that, but I placed the sensor in my bedroom and I was measuring the, uh, what the sensor was measuring throughout the, you know, the entire night when, well, it's it's our bedroom. So it was my uh, my wife and I who were sleeping in the room. We got to bed quite uh, late. I think it was like almost 1 a.m. Uh, there was a Coldplay concert that night. So, so it wasn't a really long night, but as you can see, throughout that entire night, the device was reporting that um, it was, you know, there was presence in the room and there was definitely presence in the room because both of us are just, uh, you know, sleeping. So you can see that the distance is pretty much all over the place, but at least what I was expecting that the, the presence uh, or the occupancy value, it just stays on for the entire night. And um, I heard that with these millimeter wave sensors, they can detect sort of like the breathing that well that's the pretty much the same motion what it was able to pick up when i was uh, uh you know sitting across the room in the living room uh, but uh, definitely you are more motionless when you are sleeping and i heard that in some cases the sensors are put under the bed or on the ceiling above the bed but here i just placed the sensor on a cabinet which is next to our uh, bed so it was like you know, watching the bed from about like a one meter high distance, sorry, one meter height. Um, and I thought that maybe this is not the best placement for this sensor. Maybe I would have much better results if it's looking directly onto the bed from the above or below. But even this position was perfectly fine. As you can see, it was reporting presence all the way to the morning. And obviously we got up and then we went downstairs to have breakfast and then it just stopped reporting presence. So I am actually pretty happy with that result as well. So that was it for today. If you are interested in this device, I'm going to leave purchasing links in the video description. But I think that should be all for today. If you are interested, then look out for the follow-up video on the, you know, the more regular review video on this. But um, that should be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.